Oh, I'm done. I didn't choose to be a freelancer just so I could annoy people with emails all day. What would I love to do right now if I could? And here is the most loyal of studio companions, the domestic honey cat, ravenously chewing a stick in the back garden just because she can. What would you say if I told you you would never have to send another cold email again? Well, if you've been watching this channel consistently, then you'd probably call me a liar, and you'd be absolutely right. But the content that I create on this YouTube channel is somewhat meaningless if it doesn't grow and develop along with my career. And I'm definitely under no illusions of the value of direct marketing, certainly as a freelancer, especially as a voice actor, uh, because I've done it consistently for four years. In that time, I've reached out to about 4,000 people, I've built up a list of 900 prospects and I have a client base of 120 people which is direct proof that it does work but in the last six months I'll be honest in that I feel as if I've hit a bit of a wall most of the most obvious suspects especially in the video production uh, world I have contacted and so the last six months has been making sure that I've gone back um, not missed anyone out seen uh, what details have changed what have not and then I've gone after some more kind of niche areas and the thing about those smaller niches is that I found that it's far more difficult to get traction. And so despite being probably the most confident I've ever been in my workflow and the offering that I'm making, it wasn't really getting the results that I'd seen in the past and it was demotivating me as a result. Now in my last video, I extolled the virtues of social selling. And if you haven't checked out that video already, then I really recommend that you do. I really enjoy content creation in various different forms and having identified a platform in LinkedIn where a lot of my potential clients, leads and prospects actually exist and are also active, it seems like an obvious thing for me to be able to spend my time on so that I can actually organically engage and network with them, learn about what their real concerns are and the other problems that they face outside of the sector, learn about what their problems are, not just in voiceover, so that I can actually talk to them on a proper one-to-one -one level. But I know the business part of my brain will always keep asking, yes, but what's your conversion rate? What's your return on investment? And believe me, I go on about these phrases all the time, so I know that they're important. In order to be able to justify doing an activity for your business to be working on your business as opposed to inside your business, then you need to make sure that what you're actually doing is going to yield certain results. Otherwise, we could be posting reels on Instagram until the cows come home. Your whole focus and emphasis for the vast majority of people who start a business is that they're replacing uh, short term pleasure with long term gain. They know that they have to commit to a certain level of grind in order to be able to gain results. But now that I've got somewhat established in my my industry, I'm more open to the idea of trading some of that potential profit for having more day-to-day -day joy. Might social selling and content creation be half as effective as just doing direct marketing or even a quarter effective as direct marketing? Well, yes, possibly. But if I enjoy it so much more that I end up doing twice or four times the amount of it as a result, then we'd end up in exactly the same place. Plus, I'll be enjoying the journey a lot more. If my whole idea in pursuing voiceover was because I wanted to embrace the the creativity, the enjoyment, the freedom about doing something that I wanted to do, then this change in mindset at this time in my business seems to make a great deal of sense to me. I'm not doing it solely just to pay the bills, though obviously it also pays the bills. And when I am talking about the joy in the work, I'm not just talking about the voicing itself, but all the things that go around that. Getting to know people properly, being able to express myself freely, finding speeches that I want to do that I'd never get to perform, and testing myself against that. Doing daffy content with my cat. All of these activities, however ridiculous, enthuse me greatly and get me more excited to go out and do my work. And so there's a part of my brain, and I think it might even be the logical one, that's telling me to embrace that. Now I will, of course, still be sending emails because some people are never going to hear of you unless you make an introduction. But I'm no longer applying a really structured approach where I have a set number of emails that I need to send per day or per week. Instead, what I will be doing is tracking what my metrics are what my new leads, prospects and clients numbers are going to be for the following six months so that I can then properly compare this new approach when I'm fully invested in it and see what exact balance, what the trade-off really is. But if I can still make progress while being creative, being authentic and being open to conversations, then obviously that might well be the healthier way to go now that my business is somewhat established. As ever, I hope you found this video useful. If so, please do like, subscribe and spread the word about the channel. If you have any other insights about what I've been talking about here, then please do let me know and I look forward to seeing you next time.